Primates are often said to be the species most similar to human beings. What is unknown, however, is that primates are also the most abused animals in the world. Coming from some horrific experiences in zoos, laboratories, and as people's pets, the residents here have a newfound freedom. Offering visitors a unique viewing experience, Monkeyland is the world's first free-roaming multi-species sanctuary, where primates are rehabilitated both physically and emotionally. This is an encounter with animals at its best. No cages, no electric fences, just our three adventurers, Kazir from Kenya, Gabi from Germany, and Casilla from Brazil, in a spacious natural surrounding with monkeys and other primates. From an abused past to a glorious future for these tree dwellers of planet Earth. Among the beautiful mountains of the Tsitsikama forest lies the Monkey Land Primate Sanctuary. This piece of indigenous forest is found near the seaside resort town of Plettenberg Bay in South Africa. The whole idea behind Monkey Land um, evolved around the necessity to get primates that were previously disadvantaged out of cages. Anything on a chain, anything in captivity. Monkeyland gets its primates from zoos, laboratories and the general public, some being surrendered pets. When they arrive here, we set them through a program where we try to dehumanize them. We try to get the hamburgers and milkshakes out of them and get the monkey back into them to prepare them for their life in this forest here. There are more than 450 primates in the park. Monkeyland opened its doors to the public in April 1998 and since then, visitors have enjoyed their encounters with these primates who originate from all over the world and now live in this 23 hectare or 57 acre forest. The whole idea is to give them back their freedom, a little bit of payback time. And the reason for that being your non-human primates are possibly one of the most abused of all the animals on the planet. Uh, everybody looks after antelope because we eat them, we look after them. Nobody looks after primates. They simply catch them, sell them illegally for the pet trade. Uh, people destroy the forest that they live in. And monkeys are tree people. They live in forests. They need that, apart from the fact that the human being needs this. This is our lungs around us. Another threat to primates is the so-called bushmeat trade, where people catch primates for food. People also sell primates for their own profit, making millions of dollars out of illegal monkey trafficking and pet trade. The destruction of the rainforest is another threat to their existence. Biomedical research on primates also takes its regrettable toll. And the idea was here to create a haven, a safe haven, a sanctuary for them, where they can go about the way they do in the Amazon, the way they do in Central Africa to give them the freedom to live in hierarchies, to do what monkeys do best. In other words, to live in forests in harmony. It's lovely to watch animals in their natural environment. And here at Monkey Line Sanctuary, that's exactly what they do. It's the world's first multi-species free roaming animal sanctuary. Now we're here with Surgeon. Hello Hi. Surgeon, morning, Hi. how are you? <laughs> Surgeon's gonna take us in, so come with us. All right, come through. Right, so uh, welcome ladies. My name is Surgeon. I'm your guide here in Monkeyland. I'm going to show you this interesting uh, species of primates. Right here I've got a capuchin, um, which is originally from South America. And just behind the capuchin there's a black lemur with a ring tail. And they're basically cuddling, they're uh, grooming each other. Now, it's quite interesting to see that there are different species exactly in one area and uh, very important, uh, they don't even fight. So it's quite interesting to bring species from around the world together and seeing them interacting. The black lemur is completely a different species. The ringtail also completely different. The ringtail is basically your national animal of Madagascar. 
Your ringtail uh, would be uh, more found in southwest where you find your black and white in uh, the northern part of Madagascar. Lemurs are only found on Madagascar and nowhere else in the world where you find lemurs. Very important, they are not monkeys but they are completely a different group, what we call pro, uh, pro simian or pre-monkey. These are ring-tailed lemurs. Most of them have 13 white rings and 13 black rings on their tails. Lemurs use their tails for balance, but also to remain in visual contact. Now they are endangered because of their tails. Tourists come to Madagascar and buy these tails as souvenirs, trophies or for adornment. In Madagascar, 70% of the indigenous forest has been lost. Ringtails can be seen feeding mostly on sweet potatoes, broccoli, apples, bananas and oranges. Strictly vegetarian, lemurs in the wild would feed on bamboo. Here at Monkeyland, they like to eat leaves. On sunny days, they sit in the sun, spread their arms wide open and sunbathe. Ringtails come in groups of up to 30. They are very social animals with females leading the pack. They kick out all the big males who form their bachelor group. Right, we're looking at a Malaysian primate. Uh, they found in Malaysia, Indonesia, um, but you also find them um, around uh, Thailand. Um, these are spectacled langurs. Spectacled langurs, uh, the name derived from the eyes, and the long tail, which is over 70 centimeters long. All right, beautiful gray colors when they are adults, but uh, when they are young, young ones are born, they have a complete different color. Uh, we're looking at an orange color, bright orange. It's normally poisonous in the wild. And uh, at the age of two years, they start changing color. And uh, this color now shows adult. Um, spectacle langurs um, weigh uh, normally from 10 to 15 kilograms. And um, your spectacle langurs uh, live up to 40 years. So that's a quite uh, a good average for your primates. Um, then they come in groups of uh, 10 to 30. Quite big groups for something that big. Um, and what normally happens in the group is that you have uh, dominant males and then the few, few females that they have uh, would be then the partners. If he flicks his tongue, you know it's not a good sign, so you're going to have to get out of there. Uh, by the flick of the tongue, they show a threat, and if you flick your tongue, it's a challenge. So rather prefer that you keep your tongue in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> still very friendly uh, primates. I want to make sure that you see the given yeah. tree warming, so I don't think we're going to rest <laughs> before, uh, before we found before it. we find the gibbon, yeah. <laughs> Sounds we are, are your gibbons vocalizing as a result of marking territory. They do it certain times of the day, but also in mating season, it's slightly a different tone to it, and this is where they would entertain each other. Kibons would normally be considered or called Asian singers of the forest. And this is exactly the sound that we hear. Gibbons are found in Southeast Asia and are extremely agile and acrobatic. They move by swinging gracefully from branch to branch and on vines. They also negotiate small branches high up in the air, like tightrope walkers. They used outstretched arms to help keep their balance. Gibbons can also leap acrobatically across large gaps in the tree canopy from tree branch to tree branch. Gibbons have been known to leap over 9 meters in a single jump. Gibbons are classified as apes, not monkeys, owing to the absence of a tail. They come in different colors brown, silver, grey, snow white and beige. Group sizes are in the region of six to eight. Gibbons give birth to only one baby every four years. Unfortunately, gibbons are on the endangered species list. The primates at Monkeyland are not found on predetermined points displayed on the map. 
Visitors should search for them and be rewarded by finding them as they should be, free and in the wild. There's a black and white rough lemur on the table. And uh, with no tail. And yeah. This is uh, one of the reasons why they're still in Monkeyland, because yeah. they are handicapped. There are 12 feeding stations in Monkeyland. Residents are fed twice a day, in mornings and late afternoon. Monkeyland primates consume 400 kilograms of food per day. One of the features that distinguish lemurs from monkeys is their pointed snouts. Lemurs have a good sense of smell, where monkeys choose by sight. Lemurs are more nocturnal, and for that they have black and white vision, where monkeys see color. Female social dominance also sets lemurs apart from other primates and mammals. They have a different type of ear to monkeys. Monkeys have rounded ears, like humans, but lemurs have more cat-like ears that can turn to where the sound is coming from. There are approximately 100 species and subspecies of lemur, and most of them are either threatened or endangered. Unless trends change, extinctions are likely to continue. Monkeys and lemurs without tails or limbs quickly learn to compensate. What does help is that there are no predators in monkey land. Now, normally when primates come from captivity, they come with uh, problems. Some come with tails that have been uh, taken off, amputated. Some come with canines that has been removed because they eventually start to bite. Um, some primates come from uh, laboratories where they have been tested on uh, cosmetics and uh, you see them coming with eyesight problems. Some are mentally disturbed when they come to Monkland um, because of the wrong injections, uh, testing on vaccines. Um, you also find primates that uh, come from people that have abused them and abusing the monkeys not just by uh, whipping them but also by giving them the wrong diet. Some are coming here over, completely overweight and also been diagnosed with diabetes. In Monkland, we are releasing primates into the natural habitat, but it's only those that we know that they'll be able to take care of themselves. They need to be strong mentally, physically, before we can release them. It's not any type of monkey that can get released. Some is just completely mission impossible. Bem, pessoal, estou aqui na ponte, na maior ponte suspensa da África do Sul. E é como se fosse assim na copa das árvores, mais ou menos no topo das árvores. Sabe o que é interessante aqui? Dá para ter a mesma sensação que os macacos têm quando eles olham para a gente de cima para baixo. Monkey Land has a suspension bridge that is 128 meters long that hangs over the forest canopy at a height of 20 meters. This is where the vervet monkeys like to hang out. These indigenously South African monkeys are found throughout the country, but also throughout Africa. Unfortunately, many farmers in South Africa view vervets as agricultural pests. At Monkeyland, they have a better status. Here they are known as the teachers of Monkeyland, because they know this type of forest, the weather conditions, and the types of vegetation available as food so well that they can teach the other monkeys. Squirrel monkeys are very social. The kids like to play a lot. I'm now viewing them playing, wrestling, um, interacting, basically socializing. Um, these are young ones of maybe just eight months old, nine months old, but nothing more than one year. One of those young ones will definitely become a leader because he's outsmarting the others when they play wrestling games. So yes, this is how they also become leaders. Becoming leaders is not always about fighting, but sometimes just for fun, they say, well, I don't mind if you want to be our leader because you're quite cool to play with. Squirrel monkeys are found in the Amazon jungle and along the coasts of South America. Squirrel monkeys are known as the piranhas of the Amazon. They come in big groups, most often of 100 to 150, but group sizes of up to 500 have been observed. They may be the smallest monkey species in Monkeyland, but the largest in number, and they are definitely the cheekiest. Around 100 to 120 squirrel monkeys live in Monkeyland. It's safety in numbers for these small monkeys of the forest. Nice 
Those are your, your black and white rough lemurs, busy marking territory. They don't want to be beaten by the gibbons, so they thought, okay, we're also going to mark our territory, seeing that everyone is marking territory. This is how we mark our territory. Second only to the blue whale in vocal ability, the howler monkey is recognized as the loudest land mammal to inhabit planet Earth. Male howlers have large throats and specialized shell-like vocal chambers that help to turn up the volume on their distinctive call, which can be heard from a distance of six kilometers. The howler monkeys are typically known uh, by the way they make sounds, but also recognized by the mane that you see, it's almost like a beard, almost like a, a, a lion would make a sound or would look like. <laughs> Back at the restaurant, it's time for rest and relaxation, a much deserved respite after a hard life. Time to lie in the sun, enjoy the fresh air, and not to worry about where the next meal is coming from. You can just see in their eyes they're thinking, ah, this is how it should be after all. We, for instance, earlier saw a black lemur in the forest here. Uh, he's at this stage um, one, of, uh, one of his kind that we have in the forest. Now, his name, by the way, is Brad Pitt. Uh, he came to Monkey Land a couple of years ago, three, four years ago, five years ago even, uh, with a problem in the sense that he was completely blind. Uh, his eyes were riddled with cataracts. Now, this is often what happened to primates in, the, in captivity where um, they don't receive the necessary care that they should get. Um, once the animal arrived here, we became aware of this problem. And to solve the problem the way we've done with so many other primates in the sanctuary, there's, there's, there's hundreds of stories we can tell you, was um, that we sent this specific black lemur to the Johannesburg Human Eye Hospital to um, perform laser surgery on the eyes which uh, was in the end a very big success story uh, after the animal have been uh, walking around with this problem of having poor or no sight uh, for a great deal of his life. It was very rewarding when Brad Pitt came back to us after the operation. Being a prosemium, your so-called half monkeys, he had to rely until that time basically just on his smell. Uh, to identify whatever he liked in life. The people he liked around him, the food he liked, his wife, his female that he lived with. And uh, he never had the opportunity to see that. Now coming back after the operation, as I mentioned, that was a very big success. It was extremely rewarding to see how this animal actually reacts. In the past, 
he would sniff around the feeding station for his favorite tidbits, his favorite foods, which all of us have, we have certain favorites. Coming back with the eyesight restored, it was amazing to see this animal sniffing, going around the normal behavior, and then sniff something that he really likes, and then just stand back and for the first time be able to see the color of a papaya, for instance. It was extremely rewarding. The female that he had to live with during that period of time, he had to always follow his snout, uh, smell the lady to find her attractive. And uh, when that familiar smell came with a female and he joined up with a female, before we released him into the park, you could see him sniffing the female and then stand back and look at this female, look at my wife, so to say, the first time that he could see it. What makes it very interesting that your black lemurs, the males are always black, and the females are basically redheads. So it must have been uh, an amazing sight for this animal to see this red female for the first time and to see that he is black in that sense. And still uh, in his brain realize that, you know, we are actually one of a species and this is how I look and this is how my wife looks. Uh, the success of the surgery on the eyes also enabled us to, for the first time, let the animal out of captivity, out of cages. So he could go into a forest like this and enjoy the forest, see the colors, see the birds, um, things that only existed in his, in his life of darkness before that. Um, there's, there's so many similar stories in Monkey Land where we had primates that were previously disadvantaged and this is the whole driving force behind Monkey Land is to give them back their freedom. It made my heart happy to see animals who were once abused and neglected now being treated so well. Tables of food laid out in front of them, trees to swing and play in, a place to relax in the sun and feel at home. Thousands of monkeys perish or suffer unnecessarily every year because of human indiscretion. Wild animals such as monkeys do not make good pets. Please spread this message. On top of that, make a decision not to perpetuate animal abuse and refuse to buy products that have been tested on animals. Many people say that animals do not have the ability to make decisions, but only act from instinct. And yet, here I saw with my own eyes a lemur that was searching out his favorite food. He kept looking until he found the piece of fruit that he wanted, perhaps that which was best for him. I believe that God created these animals with intelligence, with the ability to choose, to make wise decisions and even strategize. God surely is a wonderful creator. We've come to the end of the program. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Sergeant, as well, for that wonderful tour. And you are welcome. It's a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> you know, the closer I get to nature, the more I feel God's creation, the more I feel the responsibility to take care of it. Until next week, God bless. <laughs> Hey, my name is Yolanda. Hey, my name.